God, according to your own song that we sing, he said that what? Heaven and head do, do what? They bow before him. My goodness, this whole earth that we are living in, even the earth herself, when he goes before God, she bows before him. She bows before him. So how much more me and you? We are not bigger than the earth. So why can't we bow before God? Why can't we kneel before God? Why can't we bow before God? Why can't we bow before God? Because of ABT. The earth, bigger than everyone, the earth bows before God. The earth bows before God. How much you will be in Jesus, you need to understand God. You see, you cannot really understand God because He is sovereign. You can't understand Him. But to a certain level, you need to understand God. Hallelujah. I want you to, in your own words, in your own language, lift up your hands with me. Just lift up to worship. For the garment 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 to worship, the right heart to worship, the right words to worship. Hosea the 14, chapter verse 2. Father, it is written in your word that when we come before you, we should take words with you, with us. We have taken the right words by faith, and we are employing the right words to worship you in the right way. In Jesus, the living Son, let our worship, let our praises be accepted in the name of Jesus. Let our praises. Let our wish be accepted in the name of Jesus. Let it be accepted in the name of Jesus. The right garment, the right garment, the right garment. I want you to be very sensitive, be very sensitive. The right garment in the name of Jesus. As you are sensitive, as you are very sensitive in the to the leadings of the spirit, be very sensitive, very sensitive to the leadings of the spirit.
stand up and 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 stand Godana and Sometimes we go through a process that I can describe how. Sometimes I don't know, but before I see, I am already there. One of these days, I was already there, and suddenly I saw a man. A man wearing white with some white gears, sitting in a golden chariot. And the Spirit of God said that this is King David. This is King David. And I looked at this man, and he was in a golden chariot. He was going with speed, making announcements in heaven. Heaven is a city. 
it's a, a very busy city. Eh? It is not. They do a lot of activities there. It's not only worship. They do different things there. A lot of things. It's not only worship. Uh, they have court systems there. A lot of things takes place in heaven. Uh, and I'm believing that tonight, God will have mercy on someone, and that grace will fall on someone, so that that somebody to be will be given grace to begin to encounter heavenly things. Will be, will be given grace to encounter spiritual things which are more of reality than the things we see here. But it calls for prayer, it calls for humility. You cannot walk in this grace if you are not humble. If you cannot walk in this grace if you are not giving to prayer. Yes, you cannot walk in this grace if you can't discipline and walk in purity. Because this kind of grace does not want mixture. If you mix it with stuff, you are corrupting it. Yes, you are corrupting it. And then the, the, the Spirit of God will have to leave you for a while. Because He is the Spirit of holiness. So, let us continue from the, the heavenly stuff. Because we are going somewhere with it. And then we will start talking on the prophetic. And announcement was going on. Announcement was going on with a tough speed. And King David, he was making announcements that it is time for worship in heaven. There are appointments in heaven. There are days that a special announcement goes around the whole regions of heaven. That it is a special day. It is called the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. This day of the Lord is a day that is very special. The whole heavens comes to a standstill. The whole of the heavens, they come to a standstill. And they bow before Elohim. They worship Elohim. And in the book of Acts, it was also on the day of the Lord that the disciples in the upper room were filled with the Spirit of God. And they began moving in a strange way. The day of the Lord is a very unique day that is first in heaven and it also manifests here in the regions of the earth. And that is the first time I saw the importance and the value of the song that was sung by Nathaniel Bassi, Casting Crowns. It was beautiful to see this sight in heaven. Everybody in white, uncountable people, and everybody bowing and lying before God. Before God. It is so beautiful a sight to see. I remember that day I was crying, 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 crying. I couldn't control it. Because it is too pure and too holy a sight to see. It is too pure and too holy a sight to see. And that is the kind of anointing and that is the kind of grace God is ready to give to this generation. Generations that will repair. Generations that will be able to rise up in their families and begin to repair the damages done by previous generations. Generations that will rise up in the power of Jesus, the living son, and they will be able to address issues and spirits will just leave. Generations that will rise up and they will be called the prophetic generation. You don't have to necessarily be called a prophet. You don't necessarily have to be in the prophetic office before you can operate. You should be a son of the living God. And because of your access to God, you should be able to prophesy. You should be able to see. You should be able to say stuff and it happens. You don't have to be a prophet before this thing can happen. You just have to be you. You have to be who God says you are, and you begin to function the way it is, and you begin to function. I was saying before some of us came that that uh, I had the grace to be in the second heavens, in the in the angelic world, and I saw a choir of angels. As I was saying, if God is to listen to the voice of angels, no human being can please God with singing. No human being. Because even flowers in heaven, they sing. When God gives you grace to hear flowers singing hymns, 
because I have seen flowers singing hymns. There is no voice on earth that can sing hymns like flowers do in heaven. No one, no voice, no voice. But you need to see the angelic choir. Different voices, different. The way they sing, I said, in fact, maybe there is somebody on earth who can sing like that. Me, yeah, I don't know. But it is very strange. And yet, God still has listening ears for human beings like you and I. That we should sing to Him. That we should worship Him. That we should lift up His name. That we should adore Him. Then it means that you have a special place in God's heart. You have a special place in God's heart and you need to put value on yourself. You have to put value on yourself. You have a special place in God's heart. Before we uh, proceed, we are talking on about the prophetic and I want to ask a question and I need only two people to answer and we go to the prophetic. Now, some of these encounters I shared with you is a prophetic experience. These are prophetic encounters, these are prophetic experiences God gives to us for the benefit of the church, not for you to go and boast yourself that you are powerful. There is nobody who is powerful, it is only God, Jesus Christ, who is powerful. Do you know how to measure who is powerful? I'll show you how to measure who is powerful. Now, in the book of Luke, Jesus said, there was a rich man who had bands and he stored food in the bands. And then this man could look at the bands and the food he had stored and he said, my soul be at peace, rejoice. You have a lot stored in place for you. And Jesus said, what Jesus said, I like it in the fancy. Because that aspect, if you say it in English, it doesn't really, you know. In the English, Jesus said, thou fool. But if you bring it to Fantia, that is what I like. Sequasia. Yes, if you check the Fantia, it is there. Sequasia. Indian Yubiri. Melem. Medewokra. Now, tell me between the man and between Jesus, who is powerful? He is the owner of your soul. And when he decides the eternal help will elitate preaching him. If Jesus Christ decides that you are dying now, you can do zero about it. We can do all the prophetic directions we can do. Jesus says, my son, no. This one is coming home today. We can go and raise Elijah from his grave. Jesus says, no, it's no. So you are not powerful. Jesus Christ is powerful. Demons are not afraid of you. They are afraid of the nature of Jesus in you. So when they see Jesus in you, they are afraid. They are not afraid of you. Don't be boastful of whatever. It is only because of Jesus the Christ. Do you even know that demons, witches, and wizards, they operate because Jesus has allowed them to do what they are doing? It is in your Bible. Even without Jesus' permission, they can do nothing. But we think they are powerful. They are powerful because of Jesus Christ. Yes. All power. Everything exists because of Jesus. Colossians 1. Reading from the system. Every single thing. So you are not powerful. The powerful one is Jesus the Christ. My question is, what is the prophetic ministry? And who is a prophet? These two are not the same. It's different. What is the prophetic ministry and who is a prophet? What is the prophetic ministry and who is a prophet? So our teaching is starting from now. So anyone who wants to start making notes, you can start making notes. Anyone who wants to listen, who wants to record, you can start recording. Uh, this is a very expensive teaching I'm giving you because being and eating and doing stuff, some of us, we need to pray to enter and go and sit down for four hours, eight hours. I do Bible study for four hours before I have before I attend to any other things. Yes, so see, some of us, the way God shows us things and teaches us, it must be different. 
Because the sacrifices we are doing and have done is not the same. It is not the same. Yeah. So I ask the question, what is the prophetic ministry and who is a prophet? As I said, the teaching has started or it has begun. So anybody can tell me. If not, I will point somebody I want to talk. What is the prophetic ministry? What is the prophetic ministry? And who is a prophet? Who is a prophet? I want a very good Bible reader to, be, to get ready for me, as we have a lot of scriptures. Not all scriptures should be read. Some of them I do expect you to just write it down. When you go home, go, go and look it up yourself. So who is a prophet? And what is the prophetic ministry? Yes, Harrison. A prophet is God's spokesman. God's spokesman, that is who a prophet is. What is the prophetic ministry? 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 The prophetic ministry? I want someone to answer. For the prophetic ministry is if not I will I will pick someone. If not, I'll pick someone straight. Yeah. What is the prophetic ministry? What is prophetic? This is a teaching. I'm not preaching. Teaching is should be interactive. Preaching is where you will listen to whatever is coming, whether it is true or not, just sit down and listen. But this is teaching. This is teaching. We have seen who a prophet is from our brother Harrison. So what is the prophetic ministry? What is the prophetic ministry? So prophetic ministry. What is it? Okay, since nobody wants to talk. I will do it this way. We will start from here. Everybody will say what he or she knows about prophetic ministry. So we are starting from you, our gentlemen. What is a prophetic ministry? until you you say something me i am going to hold what god says i should do i will not do it and i know god is hearing me and i'm saying it i will not do it i will hold it okay so now we are here everybody will talk because nobody want to rise up to say what the prophetic ministry is so everybody will be forced to talk mr john yes okay, uh, to carry out his mission to God's people. Pastor Fred, the 
prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Um, let's take it like that ministry of information. Okay, in contemporary. Wow. Like a ministry of information. Of information. The activities or the duties of the ministry of information is to send the activities of government mm. to the people. A citizen. So the prophetic ministry is like an assignment that God has given to a prophet mm. to declare or foretell the, the past, the present, and the future of the Okay, nice. Yes, our brother, the prophetic ministry. If you don't have something to say now, just be because he will talk. Yes. How is it? Oh, wow. I've, I have heard one name of a ministry called Sisu and so. Wow. So I see it as an office. Or if you come, you know, I would say I'd like a profession. Okay. Like a profession. So we have those who can teach, those who can do this, those who can do that. So the prophetic ministry is like a profession that God has chosen for his servant. Okay. Powerful. All right, so now, uh, prophetic ministry, we want to have a look at it, uh, what prophetic ministry is. Now, uh, another name for ministry is service. Service, right? So, service. So, you can say prophetic service or prophetic ministry. So, now, prophetic ministry is one. A gate. A gate. Number one. Prophetic ministry. Not a prophet, but a prophetic ministry or prophetic service is a gate. Now, gate, full stop. We want to look at gates in Hebrew. Fast, fast. It will help us to understand. So now, gate in Hebrew is Shem. Ayin. And Rish. Some people are new here, so I will explain. So, Shem is, the symbol is like this. The Ayin is the eye. The Rish is like this. It's uh, the head of somebody. So now, Shin is fire. Eye and head. It also means repentance. So this is how the Hebrew uh, spell out the word gate. Now, the first letter Shin, which we have seen means fire, portrays God's passionate love. So God's passionate Love. That is the shame. The shame. Two. The ayin is the eye, and it stands in for deep insight. Deep insight. Deep insight. The rage, head, head shape, or repentance.
repentance. Or repentance. Headship or repentance. So now, a gate, according to God, is a place where God's passionate love is encountered or experienced. It is a place of deep or great insight. And it is a place of repentance. Okay? So now, whenever you go through God's gate, you will encounter the love of God you have never felt in your life ever before. There is God's love you have never encountered before. You can encounter this at His gate. And when you stand in God's love, Okay, the love gives you the ability to have insight of who you are. Then, when you have deeper insight of who you are, then you know your state and you can repent. Of because the moment you stand in God's love, God is full of light, and wherever there is light, darkness will be what exposed. So when you stand in God's passionate love, which is a symbol of fire, when you stand in, okay, you get deeper insight about yourself and about things. Then your head is revealed, your destiny. Then you can identify your real purpose in life and you will know if you are standing right with God or not. So for instance, Anyone who saw God in the Bible couldn't stand, but knelt down and then had his face to the ground. Because when you see God, you have come into his chamber, and inside his chamber is deeper insight. Songs of Songs chapter 1, verse 5. When the king brought the maid into his chamber, if you go to the verse 5, the maid started confessing that I am black. It is until God brings you into his chamber and you stand in his passionate love, which is full of light, you cannot uncover your identity. You cannot see who you truly are. It is only when you stand in God's passionate love. So that is a gate. That is a gate in the Hebrew. So now, the prophetic ministry is a gate. It's a gate that services, okay? It is a gate that services are rendered to God's creation. You are not the only creation of God. But God render services. A friend of mine who is a prophet, he's in a crowd, he told me that Edwin, God once told me that he is the best CEO. God told him once that, uh, Manly, I am the best CEO. I make sure that everything on earth sleeps, eats, and everything is in order. God even attends to the ants. Each day, God makes sure that everyone on earth Obia is satisfied and he is the best CEO. So prophetic ministry, it is the gate that services from God are rendered to God's creation. Not only to human beings, but to all of God's creation. So it is a gate. It is a gate. And because it is a gate that God uses to render services to us, this gate can be closed. This gate, it can be closed. This gate, it can be closed. But in this dispensation and in this time, the gate is open. It is not closed. It is open and not closed. In this dispensation and in this time. Can someone please open Revelations chapter 10, verse 7. Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. And for us, I need one person to be on a standby and have his or her Bible open 
whenever I give the scriptures, whether electronically or just help us to read and then we will go because we don't have time. If nobody reads, yes, ten percent, yes. But in the days of the voice of the servant angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he have declared to the servant the prophets. Hallelujah. So now, in other versions, if you read King James and other versions, it will tell you that the mystery of God will be closed. This version says what? Finished. So now, this gate that we are talking about, it is opened and the gate has a name. If you go to the book of Acts 3, there is a gate called Beautiful. But this gate has a name. It's called the gate of mysteries. The name of this gate is called mysteries. That is why it is a prophet God uses to what? Decode mysteries. Because they have access to this gate called the gate of mysteries. Prophets are stewards of mysteries. So Jesus said, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to the Goyim, the unbelievers, the Gentiles, people who are outside there, people who are outside the camp of God, they do not have this grace to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. So a time is coming that this gate called the mysteries, it will be closed. So your Bible says that prophecies will pass away. It is in your Bible. So now it is not passing away now because the gate is still open. But the time is coming that that gate will be closed. And when it is closed, prophecy will cease. When it is closed, mysteries will be closed. So that is what a prophetic ministry is. Now, services that God gives, as I said, is not only to human beings, animals and plants and all this. God attends to them prophetically. And from the beginning, I told you about some of the encounters in heaven with worship, etc. It is also a service. And this is prophetic stuff. This is service. So God going through this gate doesn't only render services to those on earth alone. But those in the regions of heaven, they are also benefiting and having direct access to the services of God, to the services of Elohim. That is the prophetic ministry. It is a service, a gate that God through renders services to every individual. So tonight, if you have faith, God will render you a service tonight, prophetically speaking, because that gate is not closed. So if you can connect yourself to the oil by faith, if you can connect yourself to Jesus by faith, that gate that is not closed, God will through this gate give you a prophetic service, will give you a ministry. God is going to impart and God will be a blessing to your life. So we have seen what the prophetic ministry is. Can I do away with it? So we want to, uh, Bible reader, I have my Bible here, so somebody can come and stand on there and be reading for me as well. Anybody who wants. You see, now, I want to be very honest with us. When you come to a prophetic meeting, right, everything done has a meaning. And don't let somebody force or push you into doing stuff. Why? Because whenever you attend to things in the house of God willingly, say a Bible student and you are here, you will see that whenever it comes to offering, God accepts a willing and a cheerful giving. And there is a reward for that. Don't let somebody come and talk plenty before you are convinced to go and do it. So later on, a saw there where God doesn't bless you. You don't get nothing because it is out of force. You, you get zero, but let it be a free way. We need a Bible reader. No, nah, son, except you don't know how to read, then you sit. But if you are, if it, if, if it is because you are shy, then Jesus will be shy of you. Straight. It's a prophetic meeting, and we are straight. Straight. We give it to you straight. Here I'm going to find you. But 
straight. Alright, so Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Now, we want to look at the element of the prophetic ministry or the nature of the prophetic ministry. Revelation, the chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 2. And I read, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bore record of the word of God, and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Amen. Amen. So now, what he read, I will let him take it one by one. He will take his time and then he is going to take it one by one. So now, the first verse. Let's go. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Full stop. So now, the element or the nature of prophetic ministry is one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. Full stop. The next thing is the prophetic ministry is not a ministry for worship. That you are a boss. People should see you to be powerful. You are this, you are that. That is not the prophetic ministry. Prophetic ministry is service servitude and servantship. You are a servant. You serve. The prophetic ministry, you serve. Please. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John. Full stop. The prophetic ministry worked hand in hand with angelic ministry. Angelic ministry. Verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God? Full stop. The prophet who is operating in the prophetic ministry must bear records of what? The word of God. Records of God's word. We walk hand in hand and we work hand in hand with what? Angels. So, with the angelic ministry, one Chronicles 21. Verses 18. Luke chapter 1, verses 11 to 19. But I want you to take the verses 11 and jump to verses 19. Luke chapter 1, verses 11. Luke chapter 1, verses 11. Luke chapter 1, verses 11. Verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now, the, the angel appeared to whom? A name was mentioned. So, if it is not mentioned in the level, keep reading. And when Zacharias in saw him... Verse, the verse 11 mentions Zachariah. Okay, so we are, we are satisfied here. And who is Zachariah? Who was he in the Bible? I said he being a, a father. He was a priestly prophet. Zechariah, if you read Chronicles, you will see that Zechariah was vested with visions of God. Other prophets were going to him to understand God's vision. He was, he was a royal priest who was clothed with the visions of God. He had the mantle of visions. He understood the visions of God. And the Bible is saying that the angel went to him. So the prophetic ministry again confirms to us that prophets we walk and work hand in hand with angels. 
The same thing is in the demonic world. False prophets also walk and work with dark angels. They also give accuracy in information. Now, listen to me very carefully. You don't judge who a true prophet is by accuracy of prophecy. You don't judge who a prophet is, whether the prophet is from God or not, by accuracy of prophecy, by mentioning names and telling you past issues, that which is now and that which is yet to come. This work, every spirit can do this. Every single spirit can tell you this. Why? Because before human beings were formed and created, spirits were already living. Spirits, they do not die. It is Jesus Christ who knows how to handle and deal with spirit. That is why he said, when you want to deal with her spirits, deal with them in his name. Because he knows how to handle them. So when you deal with, with them in his name, they know who is dealing with them. That is why in the book of Jude, when Gabriel, do you know the rank of Gabriel? He is a big boss in the angelic canopy. He is a very big boss. He is a coverer. He is a commander. He is in charge of the army. He speaks. He is a big boss. God has assigned him over Israel. One of his legs is on the sea, and one is on earth. And he has not opened his leg, but he is standing in a normal way. That is how big Michael is. Very big box. But even when he came against another spirit, okay, he didn't fight him. What did he do? He broke him in the name of the Lord. You see? So even... Michael, a big boss, he didn't fight the spirit, but he rebuked that spirit in Jesus' name. So it is only in Jesus' name that spirit beings can be handled. Okay? So every spirit can mention your name, can tell you issues, what is in the past, what is yet to happen, and what is even going on in, in the now. Every spirit can do this. If you go to Acts 16, Bible says that Paul and the other apostles, they went to a town, and a girl who was possessed with was spirit of divination, not the spirit of God. He could prophesy, pe -pe -pe -pe, accurate. And Paul needed to descend in order to rebuke the girl. Because Paul descended and he got to know that the spirit behind the girl is not from God. Though the girl was speaking the right things, the girl was accurate, but the source is not from God. That is the mistake of this generation. Because the person is accurate, he is powerful. Then we are carrying their names and then we submit to them as sons and daughters. God must open your eye. God must open your eye for you to know where your head is. God must open your eye. And I'm telling you, take it from me. If you want to test spirit, uh, if you want to know who true men of God are. Please, it is good to, to check with their fruit. But this time we are living in, fruit will fail you. Because people can pretend when they come here to be humble, meanwhile they are not humble. People can put on to be sheep, while inside they are wolves. So when they come here and you want to use the sheepy nature you are seeing, you say, oh, the person is very humble. This, this, this. So that is the fruit you are seeing. You will miss it. Don't use fruit. By their fruit you will know them. Yes. But if you want to know the, the true source of their fruit, get to know the source of the tree. And the source of the tree cannot be seen physically. It is beneath the soil. You must do some digging. You must do some prayer. You must go on your knees. Ask God that God give me insight to see the roots of this ministry. When you start doing this, you will see the number of prophets in Ghana who are truly from God and those who are not from God. You will see. Whenever you go to the schools of the Spirit, I had the grace to see the number of prophets that has been listed that God is with and they are from God in Ghana. Just few. 
But the number of prophets in Ghana, they are in thousands. And God knows them not. God knows them not. There was an issue uh, that was going uh, around with this man of Mokpa. And my mom asked me that, is it true that this man belongs to some society or something? I don't follow him, I don't listen to him. So I was like, who is he? And okay, okay, okay. I said, okay, I'll find out. Then and then I asked God, the Papa, concerning this man, who is he? Immediately I spoke, God said, Son, this man he carries my seal. God said, He carries my seal. God didn't talk again. He said, He has my seal. Full stop. So I turned to my auntie and I told her. God just said, this man carries his seal. Do you know the seal of God? The seal of God is the tab, the signature of God. But if somebody has the signature of someone, it means you have been approved. So the mop, the mop man is approved of God. He is from God. No matter the rumor you will hear, I am a priestly prophet, my name is Edwin, and I am telling you that that man, he is from God and he has the seed of God, said the Holy Spirit of God. The Son, this man has my seed. He has God's seed on him. You can do it. Don't be moved by names and accuracy and prophecy, mentioning names and ditto ditto. Hey, where your head is, you have no idea. You just put certain names on yourself that you are a son and a daughter to somebody you don't know the source. That is the mistake of this generation. We love the prophetic, but we don't want to pray. Don't let somebody give you a recommendation of a prophet and just believe. Pray about the prophet. Let God give you. Me, I walk myself to fruit of Christ in Accra. I walk myself into the church and I, I was there for the very first time for a reason. I went there, I said, God, I want to test the altar of this house. And I was there. I sat in the church and I tested the altar of the house. And when I tested it, I saw a very big, pure river like crystal. And I saw suddenly the heavens open and Jesus was walking down. Was walking down into that river I saw. And when Jesus came down in the river, he opened his arms into two and I saw a lot of people were around the altar and whatever they go to put or pray on from the altar Jesus attends to them all serious I saw it and I said bam this place anytime I'm in Accra I will come and worship here because I saw the Papa himself walk down and he was attending to the needs of people around the altar that is how to know a person who carries the seal of God. Don't be moved just by name. That this person is accurate. No. You will be deceived. Your head will be under something different. I'm telling you, this thing, it disturbs me and it bothers me. Because we are lazy in prayer. We don't pray. You must pray. Get to know the source. First John chapter 4. Verse 1, Bible said that you should test what? Spirits. Why is God telling you to test spirits? Because spirit beings are very dangerous. They can manifest and say things that will make you think it is God at work. That will make you think it is God at work and it is not God. And it is not God. So please, don't use accuracy of prophecy and all those stuff. To de determine that this person is a genuine prophet from God. No. You will miss it. Always check the source. Always check the source. Always check the source. Always. So, um, we want to go to another uh, character of the prophet. So, can you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18? Verses 24. 2 Chronicles chapter 18. So 2 Chronicles 24. 18. 
verse 24. 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 24. 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 24. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Amen. So now, every prophet must have what we call an inner chamber. You should have an inner chamber. An inner chamber. Every prophet, please read that verse again. 24. Yes. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. You see? So you will see when you go into the inner chamber. Okay? So now, the prophetic is about intimacy with God, not in the public domain but in your inner chamber. Now, let us see what it means to say the inner chamber. The inner chamber. Now, uh, can I claim? So, Every prophet should have an inner chamber. So the inner chamber in Hebrew is inner chamber. Is Tav Dalit. Tav, Dalit, and Rish. Tav, Dalit, and Rish. This one we have seen is signature or mark or a sign. This is an open door. An open door. And we have seen this is the head. So now, Tav has a value of 400. Dalit has a value of 4. Rich has a value of 200. All the Hebrew letters, they have their values. So now, the inner chamber, it is a place where God approves you. You see, it is a place where God's judgment deals with you until the very nature of God comes alive and you are approved. God only approved Jesus Christ. Now, Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, the word of God said that a voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am wet, well pleased. Another word for well pleased is in whom I approve. Matthew 12, 18. Bible says that God has a soul, okay? And the soul of God is satisfied in Jesus Christ. So, the only way God will approve you and I is when he sees Jesus in you. Then you are approved. This tau approved. You bear the mark of God. You are exempted from destruction. You are exempted from any form of death or necessary things. You are exempted. Dalit, an open door. An open door. We have seen this. Rish is head. So when you add these ones together, you have four. Uh, 604. So 604 equals 10. Do you know why? 6 plus 0 plus 4 
gives you 10. And do you know the meaning of the number 10? Who knows the meaning of the number 10? Who knows the meaning of the number 10? If you know the meaning of the number 10, share it with us. Okay, so the number of 10 means authority. Authority. Do we know that authority is different from power? So what is the difference? Can someone tell me the difference between power and authority? What is the difference between yes, yeah? Authority is, um, I think, it's the source of power. Um, when you have the power, it doesn't give you the authority. You have the power. Authority gives you the power. So authority instructs power. On what to okay, do. it's a very good example. So. Uh, from what he's saying, I will, I will come like uh, the president of Ghana is the authority and he has delegated uh, power to policemen. So when they wear their uniform, what they wear is their power, but they don't have the authority. The authority is about. Okay. So now, authority simply means the legal right. A person who has the legal right to do something. And power it's, it's not about having the legal rights. Power can be stolen. Somebody can do coup d'etat to be in power, but the person doesn't have the legal rights because the person didn't go to the right channel. The person didn't go to the right procedure to get to where he or she is. So there are differences. But it is in the inner chamber that is where God gives you the legal rights to operate as a prophet. So every prophet, you should have an inner chamber where you have prayers, where you engage God. Songs of Psalms chapter 1 verse 4. Chapter 1 verse 4. It, it shows a very beautiful insight about the inner chamber. Songs of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. If somebody has electronic Bible, he can also help us to move fast. You can help us to move fast. Chapter 1 verse 4. Yes. Draw me to be run after thee. The king has brought me into his chambers. He will be glad and rejoice in thee. He will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. Amen. Amen. So now, the king has brought me into what? Into his chambers. So the king of kings, whenever he brings you into his chambers, what happens? You will be glad and rejoice in thee. You see? So. The real source is what's in here. So the prophetic is not a public show. You must do the thing in the inside. You must be in your chambers. Wrap yourself with your mantle. Engage God in intimacy. Pray, pray, pray. Become a God chaser. He said that because of thy oil, virgins love you. And from that same verse, he read, he said that what? Draw me near. We will run after you. We will run. So you become a God chaser. You become a God chaser. So you handle these things in the inner place. And when you do all the things with God in the inner place, God doesn't give you the power. He gives you the authority. You have the legal right to use Jesus' name to do things here on earth. That is who a prophet should have. These are some of the things so every true prophet of God should have an inner chamber. And there are some prophets who have the power on earth. They don't have prayer life because they don't have inner chamber. They can be watching movies, they can be doing all kinds of things. And in the evening, when you go to program, they will prophesy. They have the power, they don't have the authority. God doesn't know them. Their source is somewhere Benin, Nigeria, Togo, different different places is where their sources are. God is not their source because they will go in their chamber and the chamber is not for entertainment. It is for serious business. It is for very serious business. So I am just serving as an eye opener because some of these things I'm saying uh, is a book that by God's grace I am 
bring it out on the prophetic deeper inside that one is detailed but i want you to get a knowledge of the prophetic so as i said don't just be moved by accuracy in names and no get to check the source of everything and then the person should have an inner chamber you should have an intimacy with god how can you know if the, this prophet has a prayer life i am asking how can you know we are letting you know i want you to go out there and be practicing stuff how can you know that this prophet who is prophesying with accuracy has a prayer life can someone help us know that this prophet has a prayer life how can you know that this person has a prayer life or not how can you know first thing you ask god you must ask god that is the first thing you should ask god about the prayer life of this person you are following or you are believing in there are certain prophets they don't fast but yet they prophesy there's a question mark somebody can tell you me i am a prophet too so i can prophesy anytime i want there is a question mark because you are a prophet you cannot prophesy anytime you want you cannot prophesy so i asked god but how can this woman's book still be open because by your own word that you taught me you are contradicting yourself and god said the book of this woman is open he is teaching me something now and god said to me that this woman lived an unfulfilled life so that it was open to two there was a greater part and a, a little part and god said that the small part i see there is the life the person was able to live the greater part she wasn't able to fulfill but the truth is her book is closed already but god is letting me see that this woman lying down there is a person who walked on earth without fulfilling purpose she didn't fulfill assignment so even that one you will answer when you go before god all the graces all what jesus has done for you to fulfill your assignment and you still die without fulfilling you also answer to god you will answer yes does it mean there is no relevance in praying for the departed in fact i am master someone because when you you can do absolutely nothing zero about it you cannot pray so when you pray who is going to intercede on behalf of the dead for you who god is not a god of the dead he's a god of the living so if you are in christ and you die jesus says that you are what asleep that is the language of jesus in the bible they told him that Charlie, your friend Lazarus is dead. What's why the name? He is asleep. So those who are in Christ Jesus properly, Jesus doesn't address them as they are dead. He addresses them that they are because when you die, it's a different story. Nothing can be changed. You cannot be called back to life. But when you are asleep, something can be changed on you. Let me let me just say that <clears throat> if there is any prayer, we have to pray for anyone when he is alive. Thank you. When the person is alive, if there is anything you want to do to support somebody, if there is any cry you want to cry to support somebody, when the person is alive, cry that cry for the person in prayer. Let things change. Not when the person is dead and then you come and demonstrate to ask how skilled you are in crying. No. No, it is not needed because that time her book or his book is closed. Nothing can change. Hallelujah. So from this verse. We have seen Sia, the prophet, and Sia. Uh, I will be ending soon for us to go because we cannot talk about prophetic without a demonstration of the prophetic. It becomes incomplete. So, the first one we have Samuel the Seer. That Seer there. We have Samuel the Seer. That Sia there is Ra'ah or Roi. Have you ever heard an attribute of God that says Jehovah Roi? 
this. So, it's telling you that our God, He is a shepherd and He is a seer. Because He is watching over His sheep. The, this Ra'a means see in, in uh, Hebrew. So now, the name Israel. So many people believe that the name Israel means for uh, those who, who go to uh, better day sense. <laughs> it means I don't know what it is. But now, Israel. This is the meaning of Israel. I'm, I'm, I want you to know today. Ra is this C. N is what? Ish. Who knows Ish? I have, I have said this here before. I have said Ish and I have said Isha in this room before. Okay. Ish is man. So Israel simply means man who has seen God. When Jacob encountered God in Genesis, the angel who is a theophany of God, Christ himself manifesting in an angelic form. Jacob engaged him and the name God gave him is that you are a man who has seen God. That is the meaning of Israel. It doesn't mean all of them. It doesn't mean more to it means a man who has seen God. A man who has seen God. So this one is a spiritual man. So in your Bible, there are certain verses Israel was used. There are certain verses Jacob was used. And the context will tell you why Israel was used. And there are certain uh, why Jacob was used. You see. So Israel simply means man who has seen God. So if you have seen God, you are a prophet. The inner chamber, you must see God's nakedness. Engage in prayer, cry your cry before God, do your prayers before God. When you come, you come and deliver the mind of God to His people in the outside, and then you go back to your inner chamber. That is how prophets in the Bible work. They don't mingle with people at all, they are inside. They deal with God, and God deals with them alone. They reason, they sit down and they reason with God. God says that, ah. I have come to earth, but my friend Abraham is here. Can I hide what I am about to do from him? We should, we should have somebody in this generation that God will come to planet earth and God says, ah, I am about to go to Accra, to go and cause something in Accra. But as I have come to this world, I have a good friend here who stays in this area. Let me go and tell him my mind that tomorrow morning I am about to scatter this area. We want to in this time, a man who will be like that. And that is who the prophet is supposed to be. God must make known his mind to you concerning individuals and concerning nations and kings. God must come to you, bring you into his chamber. But challenge, so go and tell your people so that they will be able to get ready. That is who the prophet is. That is why God calls Abraham a prophet. Relationship are not in the first man who gave tithes in the Bible that we know is Abraham. Now ask yourself that who taught Abraham how to give tithes? Who? He knew it out of relationship with God. When he was in the inner chamber engaging God, God taught him that, hey, for you to live with me, these are some of the things you need to do to live with me. Even in the schools of the prophets, for instance, we have our rules. It is a spiritual school, but we have our rules. And we, at the beginning of every month, you have to do four days dry fasting. We have foods you eat and food you cannot eat. God has a standard for all. So if you want to walk in this dimension, these are my regulations. So God revealed and showed it to Abraham. And when Abraham met Melchizedek, Abraham has encountered a lot of pastors in his time. But he never gave time to any of them. But when he saw Melchizedek, now let me tell you, Melchizedek is not Jesus Christ. He is like the Son of God. He is not the Son of God. He is like. There is Melchizedek and there is Jesus Christ. 
one is bigger than the other. Yes. There are certain creatures and creations in heaven that they have not even come on earth before. The same way there are there are human beings on earth who have never been taken to heaven before. Yes. And one of the creations in, in heaven that walked on earth is a man by name Melchizedek. And he is not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is there. Jesus Christ is there. He is different. We are not teaching on who he is. Because God gives encounters with Melchizedek and you meet him. He tells you who he is. He is assigned over the treasure room of heaven. Melchizedek. He is assigned over treasure in heaven. He is not Jesus Christ. He is not. I want you to have it in mind. He is not Jesus Christ. He is like the son of man, but he is not the son of man. So, the prophetic is relationship, intimacy. God says, I don't know you. I never knew you. So now, the, this word, Ra, is rich. Aleph, and he. Symbols. Head. Strength. It is also uh, symbolized by ox and he. Review or behold. We saw that rich has a value of 200. Right? Aleph has a value of one or thousand. He has a value of five. These are Hebrew letters and they have values. So now, Rish is the head of a man. Aleph is God's letter, the beginning. He, like in you, he, back, he, he, to reveal. So now, when we add this, Hundred plus one plus five is what? Two o six. So this one gives us eight. Do you understand why you got eight? Okay. So now, what is the meaning of the number eight? Prophetic ministry deals with numbers. What is the meaning of the number eight? The number eight is a number of a new beginning. So now, this type of prophet, the see the seeing prophet or the seer, they are people who carry messages of hope. Okay, they, they carry messages of hope. Now, the eight is two circles joined together. And these two circles joined together simply means two worlds, the upper world and the lower world. So a prophet is the middle. You are able to receive from here to deliver here. You are able to stand in from here and deliver here. This type of prophets are called the priestly prophets. They are given to prayer, they intercede. They take from men and they deliver to God and they take from God and they deliver to men. So now, when you join this verse together. I want to see somebody who will be able to put this verse together to define this uh, seer prophet for us. Somebody who will be able to join this verse. This. Who will be able to? Okay, I will make it easy. This one means reveal or behold. So I will make it very easy. For you to make a sentence out of it. Okay, so this type of seeing prophet called the Rea, it simply means this prophetic order means behold the strength of the head. Behold the strength of the head. So 
the strength of the head is Jesus Christ. So this prophetic order must lead you to Jesus Christ. Every prophet who directs you and directions or whatever he does with you is leading you to him or her. Be, be, be very careful of that prophet. Every prophet, whatever direction the prophecy is, must direct you to the head. Must direct you to the head. So these prophets, they are leading you to God. That behold the strength of the house. Now, in Hebrew, son is Ben. B-E-N. And it means the head of the house. When we say a son in Hebrew, it means the head of the house. But in English, it's different. When we say a son, it's talking specifically about a male child in English. But in Hebrew, it means the head of the house. That is why John chapter 1, verse 12 says, As many as receive him, God gives the power to become sons. So you can be a woman and God still sees you as a son. Why? Because God can make you the woman, the head of your house. You don't have to be a maid before you can become the head or the commander of your house. God is able to use a Deborah to lead Israel. God is able to make you a woman, the head of your house. And you are a son. And you are a son. So now, the head of the house is the son. And Jesus Christ is the only begotten son. The firstborn of, of creation. And he is the only begotten of the dead. So this prophet, they are directing you and leading you to the strength of the head. And the strength of God the Father is Jesus Christ. So first thing, the prophetic, any prophet who is truly, genuinely, from God should be directing you to the head of the house. Your relationship with God must grow when you are around a prophet. Certain things you don't understand. God must through him explain for you to love God more, for you to become a God chaser. You should be able to pursue God. You should be able to love God more. God should through him decode, decode the things for you. You see, the Bible must come so much alive to you when you engage a prophet in, in, in teachings. A lot to watch church a while, man. The Bible becomes so like alive and active to you that you cannot even go one day without opening your Bible. The prophet must lead you to the word of God. He must cause you to love God and receive God. You must be a God chaser. When you come around me, some of the things I will tell you, some of the things I will share with you. In fact, you will you will start to uh, desire to go and do some fasting to be able to see some of those things. Yes, Harrison has started working with me for some time and I didn't tell him to go and fast him. He himself said, Brother, I want to go and do 21 days. I said, hey, what? He said, because I also want to be seeing stuff. He has been challenged. When he, he sits down and he listens to the wisdom of God being expressed to a human vessel like me, he finds it amazing. So, no, it means God can also use me to do it. So he doesn't come and study me. He first and set himself apart for God, that God who can also do it for me. That is how a prophet must be. You shouldn't be able to bring men to yourself alone. Let them be able to pursue God. Let them become God chases. So the next word, can I clean this one? So the next word is Nabi. So in that verse, 1 Chronicles 29, 29, he says that enlightening the what? The prophet. So this is Nabi, the prophet. So and this one is Kaf, Vav, and Aleph. This is an open hand. Open hand. This is man or a connector. Ox or strength. Okay, no. 
for now, again, every Hebrew letter has a value. So this one has a value of 20. This one has a value of 6. This one we saw in the previous one has a value of 1 or 1,000. So 20 plus 6 plus 1. Twenty plus six plus equals to is there anyone who can tell us the meaning of the number nine? Is there anyone? Yes, two people, how can two agree? Yes, it's an agreement. 
we were right. But we said something when we met for prayer teachings. We said something. We said that two means separation and division from the world. When God separates you and sets you aside from the world and everything that is in it. That is the meaning of the number two. Right? You can go to our YouTube channel and you go through the prayer teachings you will see. Yeah. So prophets, this type of prophets, they are people God himself, he has what? Separated and set aside from worldly stuff for himself. That is why a prophet should have an inner team. You, you are married to God and God alone. It is very difficult to marry a prophet. Very difficult. Very, very difficult to marry a prophet. So our sisters here, if you want to marry a prophet today, today I'm telling you, it is difficult. Yes, very difficult. Because if the prophet is correct, he can be in the inner chamber praying for six hours and more. If he is correct and his assignment is right with God, you need to really be a woman prepared for him to be able to marry him. If not, you will go for him first. Seriously. So now this type of prophet, this one means open hand. We have the gate, which means a house. We have the valve, which means a man or a connection. And we have the aleph, which means strength. So I want somebody to connect these words together and make a sentence like I did with the first one to tell us the meaning of this type of prophet. I want somebody to just look at it. Very well. Open hands, house, man or connection or a connector, strength. Somebody should put English together and make a sentence out of this. Just put English together. Put some grammar, conjure certain things together. Make a sentence out of this prophetic word. Anyway, before you say it, let me say this one. 
it is a prayer position. Okay. So that's why it's hard. Open hand. What can you see? Uh, if if you have a open open hand, uh, it means you are receiving something or you are praising or you are so, worshiping. Yes, he carry praises. He are people given to prayer, but they also love to talk about money issues because their hands are not open. Yeah. They give. You must also. So this type of see the unique thing is that now they carry an element of God in themselves. They carry the strength of God. Again, you will see a house, fellowship, intimacy, fellowship, intimacy. Fellowship, intimacy. So if you are here today, you want to walk in the prophetic grace. You want God to impart you with the prophetic grace. But you are lazy in prayer. Count yourself out. You can't pray because when you are imparted, you will go and kill the gift. You will kill the gift. So count yourself out. Somebody did 21 days. Maybe I bet that I want to be serious with this gift. Somebody did to one of this. So it is a very serious issue here. Okay, so the last one. Please, oh, I will call someone to also make a sentence with the last one. <laughs> I don't know who I will call. So be, be ready to be preparing yourself. Okay. So the last one is Jose. I didn't say Rose. <laughs> it also means a seer. But as I said, this there are differences in this CS. Now it's Tav, Zain, and He. So, who can tell me the value of K? Yeah, in the CCR, so who can tell me the value of K? Yeah. Harrison is telling me we have done this <laughs> right now. Okay, so what is the value? And you are saying two. <laughs> we have done here right now, so what is the value of K? After reading, <laughs> <laughs> I think this word is new to us. Yeah. Saying, I think we have not seen it. Still. But what is the value of Tav? Tav, just right now, we did Tav. What is the value of Tav? Yes, Tav is then right. then Yes, but what is the value? Then 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 Four hundred. <laughs> so, Zay has a value of seven. It has a value of seven. So, Tab, we know, is the mark, judgment, signature. Zay means a weapon or a sword. And he revealed or So 400 plus 7 plus 5 is 416. So 16 becomes what? Do you remember all the numbers we got? We got 2, we got 8, and then So 7. What is the meaning of 7? Perfection. It stands for a lot of things. Like you are, I would take the perfection. So you will end here because of that. So now, you are going to make a sentence. With them. So let's say signature, mark, sign. So you can start from up or you can start from below. So this is review or remote, weapon or sword. Signature, mark or sign. So make a sentence. I will pick someone. I will pick someone. Strength. Now, this is the strength. This means strength. Uh, this is 
and he, right? Okay, he, he, it's not added. He, review, then second or any, yeah, a word one. Tab, we have said it over and over and over and over here. It means judgment, God's mark on, on you, his signature, his approval. So now, please join this. Weapon with the signature. The review weapon with is the signature. Powerful. Powerful. Any other? Yes, someone can also try it. Behold the weapon. Behold the sword of his signature. Okay. Behold the sword of his signature. Behold the weapon that carries the signature. Behold the weapon that carries the signature. You see, all are. <laughs> okay, so now, but uh, I want another one here. But do you remember that I once told us that the tab is the cross? Do you remember? So the cross, which is symbolized by this or a name. So let's see, we have added a name. It as the meaning of like signature sign cross name. So, can someone make a sentence not with this but with the name? Behold the sword of the cross. Okay, behold the sword of the cross. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Okay. Behold the weapon name. Behold the weapon that has been made. And this is revealing Jesus Christ. Straight. Jesus is the weapon of God that was made. This is revealing Jesus Christ. So this revealed, revealed sword that was crucified, that was judged, that was nailed. And you see, I said all the prophets must lead you to. Jesus Christ. So, and it is evidence here. All were directed to Jesus. All. It shouldn't direct you to anything different. Only Jesus Christ. So, revealed sword, revealed weapon that is nailed. Behold, the approved man, which is of God, Jesus Christ, the only one that pleases God, that is approved by the Father. So in Him, we can also be approved and be accepted by the Father and we have access. And we have access. So these are the Hebrew words that was interchangeably used in describing the prophet. But this type of seer, the first seer, the Ra, sees face to face. It's an encounter type of seeing. And this type of seer is a watchman. There are differences. This type of seer is a watchman. But the, the rare is a face-to-face. -face. God brings the person into the thing. And the person sees. Like, for instance, I, I had a place to engage uh, one song. I've forgotten the name of the song anyway. Uh, <clears throat> It was composed by one Nigerian man, and I was in uh, five days dry fasting. And on the fifth day, I came out, and the moment I came out of the room, I actually came out because God asked me to go and pray for uh, a lady in the house uh, who happens to be our house help. So as I was going out, I met with Jesus there, face to face. So the moment I met with him, the only thing he did for me was he gave me a ring. He put a ring on my finger and he left. So I didn't ask him, I, I didn't even have strength to talk. Because I was weak, really weak. So when I met him, he placed the ring on my finger and he left. So I went to the sister who prayed. And when we finished praying, at night I engaged in worship with this song. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will 
Remember, yes, you were great. Yes. I engaged this song, I don't know for how long. Then before I could realize my environment, we were inside the clouds already. I don't know how we managed to were in the clouds. That was the first time I saw that in the clouds, prophetically speaking, there are gates. And when we got there, we saw two angels at the gates. And they didn't talk. They just smiled and I smiled back. Good boy. And then the gates opened by its own accord. Then the reason why it opened was that they saw the nature of God in me at that time. So the gates opened. Because if the gates doesn't see God's nature in you, it will never open. So it opened. Suddenly I saw myself around the throne and I was worshiping. And out of that worshiping experience, God took me into when Jesus was being crucified. And I saw a lot of people standing there. And I saw myself also standing with, with these people. But in reality, I wasn't there when they were crucifying Jesus. But in that encounter, I saw myself. I was standing there with people like this. And I was seeing Jesus Christ. How the whole process took place, I saw with this eye. Like this. And I cried. I couldn't contain myself. I even was sharing stuff like that on my WhatsApp group. I was sharing it. It was a great encounter. God brought me into the event. It has already taken place. But God brought me into it to see how it happened. So me as I'm standing here, you cannot tell me Jesus didn't die. Me, you can, you can tell somebody, but not me. Why? Because I have had the grace to see how this man was crucified. And I stood among the people there and I was watching. You see, so God brought me face to face with the thing. The raw type of scene. I was in it. I was brought into it and I saw like this face to face. So that is the raw type of scene. So there are a lot to share, but I want to end here with this one. I want to show you how prophecy comes about. Then we are ending the book into prayer. Can someone tell me how prophecy comes about? You are here and you know how prophecy comes about. Tell me about it. Is there anyone who knows how prophecy comes about? Nobody here. Okay, so I did two Bible readers. Fast, fast. Exodus 25. Verse 16, Exodus 25, 17 to 22, Ezekiel 28, verse 14. Exodus 25, yes, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. Full stop. And thou shalt put into the ark what? The testimony. So the testimony is whose testimony? Jesus. According to this verse, whose testimony is it? God's testimony. It is God's testimony. So that I, God, will give you. So it is God's testimony. So now God's testimony is Jesus' testimony. So what is the testimony of Jesus? The spirit of prophecy. So in that ark is kept what? The spirit of what? Prophecy. Okay, so now, within the ark is the spirit of prophecy. Okay. Uh -huh. Verse 17 to 22. Verse 17. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Mm -hmm. Two cubits, cubits and ha a half shall be the length thereof. And a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. Verse 18. And thou shalt make two cherubims. Full stop. Now, you shall make what? Two cherubims. So two. Two cherubs. Okay. Mm -hmm. I continue. Um, uh, two cherubims of gold. Of fitting work shalt thou make them. 
Okay, jump to the 22. Verse 22. And there, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. Now, from between the two children which are upon the act of testimony. Powerful. So I need two people to come here for me. I want to show you how prophecies are given to the earth. I need two people. Mm -hmm. But this one, you have to bear with me. I never be self prepared. The ladies here, they are shy of their boyfriends here. They are shy, but you see, I will not force anyone because you are fighting for your own reward. It's simple. Sit on your blessings. It's like that. So now, according to what he read, this is the ark, right? And God said that there is a messy word seat, and there must be two cherry beans. So this is one cherry. This is one cherry. Hey, tell you are blessed. You are blessed. Yes. So now, and the verse 22 says that from there, I will do what? I will commune. Okay? So a prophet, you go into your chambers and God commune. So where does God talk to the prophet from? Where? In it's from here, from the seat, from the blessed seat. From there, I will commune with you. But on earth, here, you, the prophet, must be in your chamber. But in the heaven, this is a heavenly setting. Okay, so this is two cherubims, and here is where God is. So now God is you. That's why I didn't call anybody to come and sit here. Because the boss is here already. So now, these two cherubims, we don't know their names. They have, angels have names. But this, in this context, we don't know their names. And they release these messages on earth. They send it down to earth. So a person who is engaging God in the chamber is now working hand in hand with these angels. Remember we said that the prophetic work with angels. So you are able to receive from this. This is where it is very dangerous. Now, the cherubs, they are the covering ones. So someone should go to Ezekiel 28, 14 with us. They are the covering ones. Ezekiel 28, 14, our last one. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. Ezekiel 28, verse 14. Thou the anointed cherub, that covers, and I have said thee so, you was upon the holy mountain of God. You walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Okay, so who was being spoken of then? At that time. So there were two cherubs, and one of them is who? Lucifer. The two cherubs at that time, one of them is who? Lucifer. Okay, so I told you that they have names, but the Bible has made us know that one was called what? Lucifer. And among the two, Lucifer was dead, anointed one among the two. And in his realm of oppression, he was the anointed one. Meaning all the rest who were in that domain were not anointed. He was the only anointed because he was in charge of that realm. Okay. So now, if Lucifer, when he hasn't fallen, was in this position and was knew how prophetic messages were given, and he was receiving it and sending it to the sons of men on earth, now that he has fallen, is he not able? To also give prophetic accurate messages because he was once there and he knew how to cover and receive messages and how to turn and release it on earth. So is he not going to do the same in his kingdom? He's going to do the same. That is why prophetic ministry is a very sensitive ministry because Satan has been where messages are prepared and sent on earth. He has been there. He was very close and he was just not ordinary chamber, he was dead, anointed. So he covers and he doesn't allow anybody to have access to God. And when he takes in the message, he turns and releases it to earth. 
And now this man is corrupt. What do you think he will? I'm a bit confused. Uh, does it mean uh, Lucifer has to go to heaven to receive messages and then give back to his false prophets? Or I don't get it. No. You want to say something? I want to. I think that Lucifer is an old practitioner. Yeah. Like a retired uh, yeah. doctor. Yeah. Who have done surgery before. Yes. No matter how old he is, when you send him to tear that, he can perform. No, but then in this process, God is the one giving out the message, right? Yes. Yes. So now God is not there with Lucifer. Mm -hmm. So how does he receive the message? That's what I'm saying. Now, now, this is where going to take the place. Exactly. Now, and you would train other people. He is now the boss, so he is here. And he also has two cherubs. Okay? Everything God has, Satan has done prepare them. If you know God's administrative structure, Satan has done the same. There are servants standing in God's presence. Satan has the same. This servant, they are in charge of the days of the week. Satan also has this servant who are also in charge of the, the days of the week. He has done the same because he was once with the original and he has copied how the original is done and he has a counterfeit of the original. So now, instead of God sitting here, Satan now sits there and he has two assigned cherubims whose names we once had some in Ghana here. They are, they are, they are the people in, in, the, in that realm. So they carry messages and they also deliver to those who are their own. And the message they give to their prophet is not a false message. They can mention your name, they can do everything, date of birth, ditto, 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 ditto. Yes. Does it mean it's more or less like Satan intercedes, intercepts the messages and then use it to, he doesn't, he's dead. Now, listen, from the beginning, we said something that is Satan a spirit or a human being? Yes. Now, between a human being and a spirit, which one first lived or existed first? Spirit. Do spirit die? No. So before you you were born and you came, spirits were living already. Okay. So the kind of information spirits they have, you don't have. Okay. One. And we made mention of what we call familiar spirits. And we said they are familiar with your history and your family, everything. They are familiar with it all. So they can be able to channel to somebody to tell you what you know about your family and it will be a confirmation to you. So that is why first John chapter 4 tells you to what? Test spirits. So when you go to prophetic meetings, you don't test the prophets there, test the spirits at work. Because certain cherubims who are from the dark world can be in that meeting and they, they can be given messages, accurate messages to be released and you will be so amazed that you will be But now, for all you know, it is some of these cherubims we just heard their names here and it is one of their services we were enjoying. The street. You wanted to ask a question. So ask. <laughs> but then uh, from the teachings, uh, I don't know, I don't know if they all remember, but then I remember man wants to live as a spirit. Mm -hmm. So how does it also work? Like if spirits were there before like, the flesh, man wants to live as a spirit. So meaning man too as a spirit know or knew things. Right. Exactly. So now if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. I want somebody to go in for us. And we are going to clarify the question he is asking. It will be answered very sharp. That's where he has to take. But God has revealed them unto us by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the details of God. 
For what man knoweth the things of a man? Wait, so the verse 11, pay attention, it says what? For what man knoweth the things of a man? Set the spirit which is in him. Is so? Now, there are certain things your flesh doesn't know, except the spirit which is in you. So there are information your spirit knows that your soul doesn't know and your flesh doesn't know. That is how unique spirits are. So as you are sitting there called Jerome, if I have the access to your spirit man, your spirit man can tell me certain things about you that you yourself you have no idea of. Even so, the things of God know it no man by the spirit of God. So if you want to know God, you must know his spirit. It is like that. So spirit beings have information your, your flesh doesn't have. Okay, so that's why I'm telling you that the spirit can give you details of your family and the spirit might not necessarily be for God. But what the spirit is saying is true. Because spirit do have information. They don't die, they have lived. The only way to handle them, we said it. Jesus said, in my name, we deal with them. So, spirit, man has a spirit, yes. And that spirit, when you die, what happens, according to Ecclesiastes, when you die, your spirit goes back to where? It goes back to God. And that, there are people who are walking here on earth, eh? there are so many information their spirit knows that they will never get to know from their spirit until they die. Yes, your spirit has a lot of things for you, but you will never know because you cannot engage your spirit. But you must grow to a level in Christ whereby you can engage your spirit. The other day we saw how David in Psalm 137 could command his soul to bless God. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So you should be able to come to a point whereby you can speak to your soul that they boy, bless God, me I'm going to sleep, this place is going to sleep, but my soul, bless God. You should be able to get to that level. So you should be able to walk with God to a point whereby you can easily go out of your flesh and be in your spirit. So for instance, the tabernacle, we have three dimensions, the outer, the inner, yes. Now, as the priest is moving from the outside to the inner one, it is a sign of how we must grow and pass by our flesh and be in our soul. You don't stay there, but you must get the Holy of Holies. That is your spirit. So God is raising a generation of people who can sit here, though they are in this room, and God can take them to a different country to do our assignment and come back. That is the generation God is raising. You should be in a, a room whereby the spirit of death can enter, and then you sense that death just entered you and you rebuke the spirit of death in the name of Jesus leave and he leaves. There has been instances, I told you of some instance that I visited my auntie and in the morning the spirit of death just entered in me and I had a place to sense. He just entered and I gathered everybody in the house and I told them that hey, this morning we must pray for some few minutes before everybody goes up. But the spirit of death just entered into the soul. And my auntie confirmed that she had a dream that somebody is dead. Before, like that very morning, she was about to get up and she saw. I said, Yeah, the spirit of death wants to take somebody from this house this morning today. She just entered. See, there have been times that I can be in my room and then the spirit called America. There's a spirit by name America. That angel is in charge of the units. Can enter my room and I can feel her presence in my room. She enters and I know because she has a very unique perfume around her. So when she enters in, I know that she is here. And I listen to signals and it means I need to call my wife. Because my wife is there, I need to call her. And any time I'll call, something is not right with her. Any time I was something is not right. There was a time that I would see her. She comes to me and she, she, would, she would talk to me. This is happening. This is going on. This is going. Before I would pick the phone and I would call her. And I would tell her exactly what she told me. And it is happening. And now that thing stopped. Now the spirit America herself comes into my room. 
And when I sense it, I know something is not right with my wife. So I call her. You see, so God is raising people and training them. You will make mistake, you will fall, but you rise up, you learn, and you keep going. You keep going. Because God wants to raise people who can be in Ghana and their spirits can be taken to Zambia to make intercession for somebody and come back. That is the kind of people who want to speak. That is the prophetic generation. They are called the generation of repairers. God will use them to repair a lot of destroyed and wasted bridges. And if you are going to position yourself right, God will strategically locate you and you will be part of that generation that is repairers. Shall we please be on our feet? Thank you and God bless you. Okay, so any question, please, is there any question, any question, any, any question? If you have a
this is what you are going to do. Just mention your name, but who crazy? And begin to the day you are born, the man. Let the hand of God take all those words. Because God said He is doing a new thing. And this thing must be corrected. That is why you are doing this. Do it wholeheartedly. For God is correcting things. For God is correcting things. God in the name of Jesus. Father, on the 24th of October, 86, the day I was born for which is a written so Whatever went, whatever went, spoken against my life, for my fire, and for my mother, that has went against me until today.
opportunity in the bar. Whatever you presented before the throne of God, that the voices from the throne of God is speaking on it and is working on it. And there is going to be a worship of it. I'm doing it with my covenant brother. He is an apostle of prayer. He's given to prayer. We have a prayer mountain in the house. A prayer mountain is in the house. There is going to be worship of it. Jesus said all those words, the voices from his throne has ended them. And the spirits that are within them, he has silenced. Your feet must be washed to usher you into a new dimension of life. A new chapter is going to be opened. So please, you come one after the other and uh, your feet will be washed and Jesus himself will usher you into a dimension of newness of faith. Whereas he are where you put your bar, the throne of God has judged it, and you will have no effect on your life ever again. Ever again. It will never have an effect on your life again. There is a lady here when you were in your mother's school that a demonic eye targeted you. But I have a good news for you. The assignment of that eye has come to you. Yeah. I'm about you. The assignment of that eye has come to you. When you were inside your mother's room, an eye was already released on you to make sure that you are dealt with power for you to miss it. But today, that eye, the Lord Jesus has dealt with. My brother, the other time I met with you, I told you that a man came and stood here. And I, I asked you that where is your mom? And you told me she is no more. And I told you that your mom is the one who came and stood here as a bear. Do you remember? And it has come to pass that a certain challenge and a certain wind that was blowing against you in the realm of the spirit that is manifesting physically here against your life. Your mother manifested in the form of a bed. And your mother came and stood on your shoulder. And this is what the bed said. That I should communicate to you that that thing, that hush, that struggle and that wind that was blowing against you, it has come to a close. And today, now as you came to this room, the bed came in again. But this time, when the bed came, the bed came in with a green leaf in its mouth. And that is a sign that it has ended. And a new thing will start for you. And a new thing will start for you. Get ready to see another face of God's favor for your life. And I told you that your mom is around you. But from today, because that chapter, the Lord God has spoken. So your mom's presence will no more be around you. She is leaving you now. Because God has started a new day. It is the eighth day in your life. A new day has started. It is the eighth day in your life. Prophetically speaking, it is remaining two minutes. Two minutes of your time and your time to bring begin. Two minutes in the prophetic realm. Two minutes and your time has come and you are going to bring. Just two minutes. Mark it down. Two minutes. Just two minutes and you are going to bring. Exactly two minutes in the realm of the spirit now. It is going to be six o'clock. And the moment it is Oh, six o'clock on the doors, you are going to see the beginning and the 
manifestation of what God said concerning your life. So please be coming one after the other. I will uh, give you my time. I don't know why God wanted me to give you the title to God, but I'll take it back. <laughs> because God didn't tell me to give it to you. They were looking nice. Hey, hey. But you are my pastor, and I'll take it back. But it is for a purpose. So as it is on, be sensitive and ask God to give you whatever He wants you to I receive it. It is for a purpose that I have been asked to give you this. You see how big my target is for you. <laughs> uh -huh. My target is really big for him, man. Eh? Wow. Okay. So please, the first person comes. Uh, I need some of the.
feet are you washed already as you are sitting today? Do you know? Your feet is the most dirtiest part. It encounters the world a lot. Three. One of the moment our sister came, one of the members of God has brought to me. It is for her, but I want you to know also that every little basic detail of your life that gives access to Satan in your life, even as your feet have been washed, let it be that God has washed all of you. how we 